All right, here we go. Today we're going to be looking at power. Now, most of you probably already remember the fact from class that we learned that power is equal to work over time. Okay, now that in and of itself is very simple and basic. What we're going to be looking at today, though, is how power ties into everything else that we've done so far this year. We're going to look at some kinematics. We're going to look at some forces. We're going to look at... Um, work, we're going to look at energy, everything that we've done so far is going to come into play here. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the first problem. All right, a car starting from rest, so initial velocity is zero, all right, accelerates in the positive x direction. It has a mass of 1.1 times 10 to the third kilograms, so 1,100 kilograms, and maintains an acceleration of 4.6 meters per second squared for a time of five seconds. Okay, so I've gone through and I've listed everything that we have. Assuming that a single horizontal force accelerates the vehicle, determine the average power generated by this force. Okay, now obviously we know that power is equal to work over time. We have the amount of time, so if we can find the amount of work, this will be a fairly easy problem. We know we have a couple of ways to get work. One of them is the force times the displacement, and one of them is the uh, change in the kinetic energy. All right. So we can do this in a couple of different ways. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to be using the work is equal to the force times displacement. Okay, I'm going to get the displacement by using kinematics. I have the initial velocity, I have the acceleration of the time, and so to get the displacement, I'm going to use one of my kinematics equations. And the one I'm going to use is x equals v naught t plus one half a t squared. The initial velocity being zero means this cancels out, which means that my displacement is going to equal one half times the acceleration, which is 4.6 times the time, which is five and then squared. So let's go ahead and plug that in. 0.5 times 4.6 times five squared. And we get a displacement of 57.5 meters. All right, so now that we have the displacement, which is going to be our S, now we just need the force. And so work equals force times displacement. We know that the force will equal the mass times the acceleration. So essentially, work equals the mass times the acceleration times the displacement. W equals mass. Okay, so W equals 1,100 times the acceleration, which is, sorry, 4.6, times the displacement, which was 57.5. So now we get the work, which is 1,100 times 4.6 times 57.5, and we get 290950. Joules. All right, and so of course to get power, we're now going to do that work, which is 290950 divided by the time, which is five seconds, and we get 58190 watts, or 58.2 kilowatts. All right. So there you go. There's the first one. As you can see, these problems are very developed and involved. We're going to be using lots of different ideas that we've been doing over the course of the year. And so let's go on. Let's try another one. Here's question number two. A car accelerates uniformly from rest. So I've got an initial velocity of zero to 20 meters a second. So final velocity is 20 in 5.6 seconds along a level stretch of road. Ignoring friction, determine the average power required to accelerate the car if A, the weight of the car is 9 times 10 to the third newtons, so the force of gravity or the weight is 9,000 newtons, and B, the weight of the car is 
So this would be for part A, and then for part B we got a different weight. So that would be 14,000 newtons. Oh, forgot a zero there. All right, so let's go ahead and do part A, and then we'll do part B. Okay, so again, we're looking for the average power. So power equals work over time. So obviously we need the work. Okay, work again, we'll probably be getting the same ways that we looked at the last one. So either the change in kinetic energy or the, um, the force times the displacement. In this case, I know the change in kinetic energy. Okay, I know the initial speed and the final speed. Now, if the weight of the car is 9,000 newtons, we know that the force of gravity is equal to the mass times the gravitational acceleration, 9.81. So let's go ahead and find the mass for that first one. So 9,000 equals the mass times 9.81. We'll divide by 9.81. And we get a mass of 917 kilograms. OK, so I'm going to find work by doing the change in kinetic energy. The change in kinetic energy would be 1 half times the mass times the velocity, final velocity minus initial, so 20 minus 1 half times 917 times the initial velocity. Now, the initial kinetic energy, uh, sorry, mv squared, Initial is zero velocity, so that's going to cancel out. So the work is going to be equal to one half times nine one seven times twenty squared. So the work is going to be one eighty three four hundred joules. And then once we have the work, we can divide by time, which is five point six. So 32,750. And sorry, that's not work. That would be power. So power was our work divided by the time. We divide by the time, which was 5.6, and we get 32,750 watts. OK? So there's your answer for part A. Part B would be exactly the same, except obviously we're going to have a different mass. OK, so um, let's go ahead and do that one. We have a weight of 14,000 equals mg. All right, so 14,000 divided by 9.81. So we get a mass of 1427. Now I'm actually going to do this one a little bit different, okay? Because you've already done it this way. You could then take that mass, you could use that mass to find the change in kinetic energy to get the work, divide the work by the time to get the power. Let's look at it the other way, right? We also know that we can get work from force times displacement. Okay, so let's get that force and the displacement. The displacement, obviously, I can get from the information I have, the initial velocity, final velocity, and time. One of our kinematics equations looks like this. Displacement is equal to 1 half v naught plus v times t. So we can get the displacement by doing that. 1 half times 0 plus 20 times 5.6, so the displacement would be 0.5 times 20 times 5.6, so 56 meters. All right, so then we're going to do force times displacement. So the work is going to equal the force, which then would be mass times acceleration, so 1427 times the acceleration, which I don't have, so now I'm going to have to get the acceleration. So let's get the acceleration from our other kinematics equation. V equals V naught plus A T. So 20 equals, now this is 0, right? Times A 5.6 seconds. So divide, so divide by 5.6 is 
3.57. So acceleration equals 3.57 meters per second squared. So there's the acceleration, 3.57. So work equals the force, which is ma, times the displacement. And so the displacement we solved was 56. So let's get the work. So 1427 times 3.57 times 56. And that will give us 285286. Right? And then divide that by the time. Right? Power equals work divided by time. So divided by 5.6. And we get power, in this case, of 50,944 watts. All right. So obviously, you could do both of these in both of these ways. Okay. Uh, this top one looks a little bit easier, because we didn't have to do any of the kinematics, actually. right? And so that's kind of what I wanted you to see here, is that there's different ways to do different problems. If you like the kinematics, you're welcome to use them to get the other velocities, to get the times, to get the displacements, to get the acceleration. right? And you can use those in, or, in order to be able to solve these problems. You're also more than welcome to work through the idea of work being equal to the change in kinetic energy if you know the velocities and the mass and you can find the change in kinetic energy. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and finish this video at this point. If you would like more help with the other three questions, then go ahead and look at the other video and I'll talk you through those as well. All right. Talk to you later.